Hello everyone, this is Grant, your friendly neighborhood OpenShift team member. In today's video, I want to walk you through how to install OpenShift 4. Now, I'm going to be going through this uh, in real time. I'm going to be setting everything up from scratch. Um, I have nothing configured right now. So the first thing I did was I went over to try.openshift.com using the Firefox browser. You can use whatever you want there. Um, and then I'm going to click on Get Started. This is going to load the instructions for me, and it says down here, step one, configure DNS, that I must register a domain for your cluster in AWS Route 53. So let's head over to AWS and log in and perform that action. We'll figure out how to do it. AWS Management Console. And I'm going to go ahead and log in here. Okay, it's logging me in here, and it said we wanted to create a domain name with Route 53. So let's find that um, on this page. There's a lot of stuff on here, and I'm not seeing it, so let's just search for Route 53. There we go. And let's uh, get started here. Let's create a domain. Click on Domain Registration. We'll click on register domain. It's a dot com is 12 bucks. Can we do anything cheaper than that? There's something for, no, $48. All right, we'll just do a dot com. That's cool. And let's just go to um, gshipleydemos.com and check that. And it is available for 12 bucks a year. Now, right, let's add that to our cart. Let's check out here, and I'm going to fill this in. All right, so I had to enter in my address information. I had to verify my email address, so it sent me an email that I had to click a link on. And now we can see that it says, thank you for registering. So we should have gshipleydemos.com now. If we go over to domain, we can see that the domain registration is in progress. So this might take just a couple of minutes. Once the domain has completed the registration process, you will see it under your registered domains inside of AWS. Um, looks like that by default auto renew is set to yes, so we'll probably want to turn that off. I don't actually plan on keeping this for very long, so I'll just disable that. Go back over to our registered domains. All right, so let's head over to try.openshift.com again, and it's going to say the next step is to configure our AWS credentials. To configure your credentials, please see the AWS docs. All right, let's click on that. And we're probably going to be downloading a command line tool here somewhere, so let's figure that out. For general use, the AWS configure command is the fastest way to set up your AWS CLI installation. Well, how do we install the command line tool? Let's click over here using pip, using a bundled installer. Let's try this pip install. See what happens with that. Paste this in. It seems to be working. All right, great. Ooh, look, fancy bars and graphs and everything. So we'll assume that that's just going to work and complete. And let's go back and we can just type in AWS configure and it should prompt us for our AWS access key uh, ID and our default region, default output. All right, sounds good. Okay, so let's type in AWS configure and as expected, AWS configure is asking for our AWS access key. So we'll need to get that from the AWS console. So I'll go back over to the management console and if we scroll down, this will be located under Security, Identity, and Compliance. Okay, so I entered in the information for AWS Configured, and I set the default region for US East 1. So now let's go back over to the OpenShift install instructions, and it says to download the install. Well, all right, let's do that. So we'll click that link, OpenShift Installer Releases, 
And this one was released uh, 18 hours ago, so that looks good. So let's scroll down to the bottom and actually download the installer. We should see it listed here. We want the Linux AMD64. So I'm going to click that and save it. And then um, we're going to run it from our command line. Okay, so back on my Linux box, we can see we have the OpenShift install. So let's just make a directory called temp here and move that into the temp directory. Go into that directory, chmod it so we can actually run it. And let's go back to the documentation and see what we have to do next. Okay, they actually just call it OpenShift install, that's fine. So we should just be able to say OpenShift install create cluster. Okay. Enter your pull secret provided below when prompted. Okay, sounds good. So let's do that. Um, and just so it matches up, let's actually move this to just say OpenShift install. And let's run OpenShift install. And the available commands are create part of an OpenShift cluster. So did I miss something on the instructions? I did. We need to do create cluster. Perfect. So let's run this again and say create cluster. Platform, AWS, US East One. This is all looking good. Base domain, look at that. It pulled in G Shipley demos for me. Cluster name, let's call this G Shipley. Pull secret. Now I'm going to have to paste this in. So I'll copy the pull secret there, paste it in over here. And there we go. That is a long pull secret. So now we have it saying it's creating the cluster. So that's pretty awesome. So let's just wait here until it finishes and we should have a brand new OpenShift 4 cluster. Once the install is finished, it's going to provide you with the URL to access your web console. It's also going to give you the username and password to use to authenticate. Let's go ahead and copy the URL. Go over to Firefox, open up a new tab, and paste that in. And we're going to accept the security certificate. And then we're going to log in as cube admin. Let me get the password. And let's go ahead and save the password. And there we go, the all new OpenShift 4 running on AWS. And I am logged in as the cube admin password. So let's just have a quick look around here. We have the catalog. Let's take a look at the operator hub. And this is all integrated with the new operator hub.io. So anything listed on that site would um, be available here to use inside of OpenShift as well. So pretty awesome. All right, that's it for this video. I hope you were able to see how quick and easy it is to install the all new OpenShift 4 using the try.openshift.com website. Thanks a lot.